Over the next few sections, we want to focus on data manipulation languages, or DMLs. In general, SQL compliant databases such as MySQL support DMLs and DDLs. DMLs are data manipulation language statements. DDLs are data definition language statements. Let's open a shell and open our documentation and take some notes before we go off working on our DML statements. Let's launch gedit and navigate towards the bottom and label this section as DML or data manipulation language which includes a series of statements so DMLs these statements that we're going to cover are pretty common across all SQL compliant databases so they aren't specific per se to MySQL and can be applied pretty much anywhere else with only very few exceptions and that's where you're, you'll notice some proprietary behavior such as MySQL's lack of requirement for specifying a table when performing certain select statements such as counts for example simple mathematics whereas other DBs have that requirement but that's not a major issue here so the data manipulation language statements allow us to do things such as select insert update and delete those are the four common DML statements we're going to be discussing select first then we'll move on to insert then update and then delete these are the four common DML statements there are other DML statements but again you'll more than likely use these statements across DBMS's even smaller DBMS's or tools such as Microsoft's access will accept standard SQL DML statements DML statements again allow us to manipulate the data using select we can return rows from one or more tables and from one or more columns Let's log into our MySQL DBMS, and once we've done that, we will issue some varieties or variety statements to get a sense for how flexible select can be in returning data. We have a sample data set loaded, albeit not much information, but enough for us to illustrate how DMLs work. We'll launch MySQL, and we'll connect as the user root and have it prompt us for a password and once in we know we're in as root at localhost with no default database but we'll use the contact database let's execute a show databases you'll see that we have a contact database and the contact database contains one table called the people table so let's use contact once within contact we'll execute a show tables and you'll see that there is one table and MySQL's output indicates that one row was returned in less than a full second. And if we want a description of the people table, simply execute a describe people, and this returns a nice description of the fields within the, the people table, including the four fields defined first name, last name, business phone one, and email address, all of them being car character type fields, and they contain little information. Now, the simplest DML select statement includes the following select star from a given table name so let's list that statement so a select star from table name in this case the table name is people and we'll be working with the people table for a great deal of our study so let's just specify table name being people this is the most simple statement and what this does is it returns all records from the table or from people in this case from people table let's execute that command so a select star and it is case insensitive however be sure to be specific with the case when specifying the name of the table we'll show you what we mean shortly select star from people returns all of the current entries which includes six users or six people or six Linux CBT employees and everything's returned all columns all rows and we get a count at the end and the amount of time that it took MySQL to return this information to the MySQL client this is the most basic select statement to get everything from any table this applies to any table that you have access to permissions wise so a select 
star from mysql.user, for example, returns similar information, all of the columns within that particular table. But it contains far many more columns, which is why the output is distorted. So let's return our output and focus on how we can use select to narrow this information down. What if we were interested in only returning some of the columns or a subset of the columns? We know that there are four defined columns or four fields in the people table. but We may not be interested in all four fields. Well, select allows us to specify any number of columns from any number of tables. In this case, we're working with one table. So a second way to run a select statement to be more granular or to return a subset of the information is to execute select with the number of tables that we're interested in, such as first name, comma, the next table. Let's say we want the email address, and that's stored in the email column. So we'd select first name, comma, email from people. And this returns just those two columns. So it returns two columns rather than the full four column set. Let's go ahead and execute this query. We'll just copy it from this particular location and terminate it with a semicolon, which is required. In fact, if you don't specify the semicolon, the MySQL terminal monitor interpreter presents a new line for us to type in more information or to end the statement with the semicolon. So, for example, a select statement could run pages long at our current resolution of 800 by 600. We may want to perform a pretty complex select which may include many joins and group buys and order buys and halvings and other clauses. So, you may run your select statement on many lines. But if your statement is truly complete, simply terminate it with a semicolon. Now notice the output's different instead of returning all four columns, only two columns have been returned. The data is still the same because it's a relational database management system. So the last names, first names, email addresses, all of the related information, a row represents a, a set of related information, will always remain the same, similar to a spreadsheet. It never gets mixed up, so you won't find one user's first name mixed with another user's email address, for example, unless someone specifically makes such a change using an update statement to your table structure. So here we can select specific columns, but this should come as no surprise. Now what if we wanted to select matching a certain pattern, for example, using such as a WHERE clause? We know that we can select specific columns. We know that we can select all columns. How about if we wanted to match specific columns, like select for me one particular user's name, but we can't remember the user's name. So let's say this output isn't on the screen. And we know that we have this people table, so show tables shows the people table, and we know that it perhaps contains a million users or more, or a large number of users, and as a result, we want to search for all matching strings. Well, when you combine a select statement with a where clause, such as the following, select, let's say we're interested in all columns for the matching rows from people, and we combine the select statement with a WHERE clause, we can now perform pattern matching or matching on any number of columns within the table that we're querying or within a number of tables that we're querying. So in this case, select star from people where, let's say, we're interested in matching a certain string that's in the first name column, where first name, like. So if you combine where with like, we can perform matching. Or you could also do a direct comparison, such as where a given column is equivalent to a certain value. But if you're not sure, and you're just searching for patterns, use the where clause with like, and then after like, in between single quotes, specify the characters that you'd like to match. Let's go ahead and match DIA. And once you've specified all of the characters that you do know, end the statement with a percent, and you may even want to prefix it with a percent, depending on what you're searching for. But if you know that the user's name perhaps begins with these characters, then specify the characters that the, the name begins with, and terminate the characters that you've specified with a percent, which is a wildcard to indicate return any number of characters after the characters that I'm interested in. So let's go ahead and execute this query, of course followed by a semicolon, and you'll see that it returns just one record because only one record matches. We can confirm as such by selecting star 
from people once again just to see that it indeed matches. We did a query based on the character's DIA percent, and if you look at any of the first names, the where clause was instructed to match the first name column. All the first name columns, those characters aren't presented in the order that we're searching for them, which includes the beginning of the first name column. Now how about if we wanted to search for a given character within a column such as first name or last name without regards for where it's positioned in the column. Let's rerun that query. So let's show you another example of a query. This will be query D. We'll paste it. But this time, let's say we want to find all first names which contain A somewhere in the name. We'll go ahead and execute percent %A percent, and this will get us all first names which contain A somewhere in the name. Let's go ahead and try this query. We'll erase this and then just control shift V followed by a semicolon and now you find first names with A somewhere in it. The A could be at the beginning and the percent simply ignores the leading space or blank character or no match for that in that matter. So if, in other words, if it is indexed at A in the case of this particular user, it still matches. But if the A appears somewhere else in the name, it then matches as well. Now notice, there are six rows in the database, but only five returned because in the case where we return all rows, one of the user's names doesn't have A in it, and as a result, it doesn't match. So that's a little bit about using the where clause matching on a given column and using like to perform pattern matching. Now let's say we wanted to find A somewhere in the name but it should end or some ending the the first name for example. So let's say we want to just look for A but terminating the first name. So this particular query would require that we remove the leading percent and just end the query with a percent. So this would look for A terminating the query or terminating the first name in this particular query. So in this case, notice that it begins, or in this case we did A percent. If we did percent A, it would give us the reverse result. In this case we got, case we got A beginning the first name and only one record was returned. So conversely, if we were to create a new query, query F, and do percent A this time, then this would return any user with a first name that terminates with A. Let's go ahead and execute this query again. And notice, here are the two users who terminate with A. So we can play these sorts of tricks or pattern matching games to return only records that are of interest using the WHERE clause followed by something such as LIKE. But again, if you do know that there's a value that matches specifically, you can use where first name is equal to to get a specific value if you know for a fact the exact name that you're interested in. So instead of like, because like allows us to perform matches using wildcards, we could say where name is equal to, and in this case we'd specify a name specifically and hope that it matches. And this provides, or this, this assumes that we know the information in the database pretty intimately, but in this case it does matches, does match identically. So we can query that way as well and certainly there's more ways that we can query. Let's say we want to find someone with the first name with VE somewhere in the name. Well just use the wildcards we just mentioned and we'll copy one of the selects that we ran with the percents wrapping the matching strings and simply specify VE surrounded by percents and this will return only the user or users with VE somewhere in the middle of the name or somewhere in between the first character and the last character. So it could be character number two, it could be or the last character. As long as it's in between the first and the last, it'll find it. In this case we return just the one row that contains VE somewhere in the string. Now VE cannot begin the string and it cannot terminate the string. So again, these are some of the ways that we can use like with our select and where clauses. Now also, we can select, as you know, specific columns, but we can order by. Now let's look at default ordering. If we select star from people, take a look at the current order. If you notice, 
there isn't really an order because it isn't alphabetized, for example. So, how do we go about ordering this output? Select star, simply add at the end, after you've specified the table name, an order by clause, and then you specify the column that MySQL should perform the sorting on. The default sort order is ascending, and you'll see what we mean, simply A to Z. So we'll order by first name, since it's easy to look at the first name column because it's on the left, and notice that A comes before T. So this is the default ascending order. If we wanted to order by in descending order, which is the reverse, we'd simply append to the end of the order by statement a DESC to indicate descending. This will reverse the order so that T comes first and then A comes last. The default is ascending, so we don't need to specify ascending, but you could do so, ASC for example, and the output mimics the original order by and as a result this indicates that we don't need to specify the ASC because it's implied so it's an implicit implicit option ASC that is super so next we're going to look at some other ways we can run select on this basic set of information let's continue our discussion of the select DML statement or data manipulation statement we've done some basic selects including selecting star from the people's or people table, select certain columns, select star including clauses so that we can match strings in any number of fields. What we want to show you now is how to match on multiple fields. So, so far we've been matching on one field, the first name field, looking for strings at the beginning, the middle of, terminating, beginning at the, the field, explicitly matching or matching exactly the characters that we've specified and by the way this is case insensitive so for example let's take this select that we previously ran copy it and paste it into the terminal paste it again now we'll alter the case by going all lowercase and notice that it still matches the first name column let's mix the case for each character or other character will alter the case and notice that it still matches. So it is case insensitive when performing this sort of clause matching using where. But we're matching, or have only matched thus far, on one particular column. What if we want to match on multiple columns? Because again, this table or any table that you're running queries against could contain so many records that it certainly helps if you describe as much about the data that you know as possible to the MySQL SQL interpreter. The better you describe what you're searching for, the quicker your results will be returned and the less data that will have to be processed, less resources that will be used, and effectively reduces the time. Otherwise, the less descript you are, the more MySQL has to parse through the potentially millions if not billions of rows in the table or tables that you're searching. So if we use the AND operator, for example, taking any one of these queries, so let's take one of the ones that match A for example because if we take A somewhere in the name it matches multiple names let's copy this query paste it in you'll see once we terminate with a semicolon here let's try it again and it exited MySQL so we'll need to launch it again MySQL and prompt for password Try that again. In this case, it connected as Linux CVT. Let's connect as root. There it is. And once in, we'll paste the query. So we'll select star from people. We're not inside of the people table. So let's go ahead and say use contact semicolon. Then select star from people where first name like percent %a semicolon we missed the or the last single quote then semicolon there it is so when we use a in between we return multiple names but what if we wanted a in between first name and let's say o somewhere in the last name so let's go ahead and, and use the end operator we'll copy the query as it is which is in memory let's paste it and let's clean this up a little bit so we'll have the single quote to fulfill the first condition 
and to append additional con conditions, any number of conditions, simply use the AND operator. So if you want to include results from one or more tables, use AND, or two or more tables for that matter. And in this case, both need to match in order for records to be returned, whereas soon enough we'll show you how to use OR, which will match either OR. So we'll select star from people with first name like percent %A, so A should be somewhere in the name and we'll include percent meaning it could be in the middle. And on a separate line, just for readability, last name like, we said we'd include O somewhere in the name, so percent %O, and again it's case insensitive. So by simply including end, we're able to increase the power of this query and to further filter the data that's returned. Let's paste this into my SQL terminal monitor and try it again. We are in the proper database, so we don't need to change again. And let's try it again. So end last name like, that should be percent O, but it's, we didn't include a percent at the end. None of the names terminate with O, as you can see by just looking at the six defined names. Now it returns users with A in the first name as well as O in the second name. These are only those users. And again, these are basic queries, but they illustrate the power of using operators such as AND. Now as mentioned, if you wanted to get either OR, so that you know that we have, if we execute a select star from people, we have six users and they have different characters in their names. Well, what if we wanted to get either OR from first name or last name? Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the next query, query J, will be to select star if that's what we want returned from people where first name like, let's say percent, we need to pick something to search for. So let's go with E for example, E being in the middle somewhere, so percent %E somewhere in the middle of the name, or last name like, let's move this to a separate line, and that's like percent, we'll go with O to be somewhere in the name. So either or should match. And of course, this could potentially return more data, but nonetheless should run. So in this case, you'll only get E either in the first name or O in the last name. If you notice, these first names only contain the first search or the first pattern. The last names only contain the second pattern. Now, what if we wanted to search for a value that did not exist in one column, but perhaps match a value that matches or hit a value that matches in the second column? So let's search in the first column for, let's say, Z something that we know that doesn't exist and try to search that way. We'll re-engineer re this query substituting Z for E and then we'll rerun it. In this case like Z doesn't show up but guess what the person who had E also has O so it still matches. Nonetheless this is sort of power and you can combine as many of these AND OR statements as you like to search for exactly what you're looking for or to find exactly what you're looking for. A much more granular search. There are other things we can do with select. What if you just wanted a count of the number of rows or records within a given table? You know that when you execute a select star from a given table it returns at the end the number of rows that are in the table. So this tells us that there's six records or six rows. However, sometimes you want just a count and not necessarily the results returned to the screen because when you have six rows it's easy for everything to fit on one screen but if you have 10 million rows they won't fit on one screen and it takes much longer well select is one of the DML languages that supports functions such as count we can use count and other functions such as concatenate and so on with the select statement to perform more powerful queries or more precise queries. So let's go ahead and set up our new query. This particular query will simply return a count of rows in a given column. We'll count it based on star because if you base it on asterisk that means to return all rows. So we'll count star from the table called people and this is all that's required to get a count. So select count star is another common query that you'll run across DBMS's. Let's try this one out. 
and notice it returns 6 in the row that was returned. So instead of returning six rows to the screen, select count star will always return one row with a value that relates or directly relates to the number of rows or records that you have stored in the database. So this way we know quickly rather than dumping all the information to screen which can take a while to write or to a file that there are six records in the table. And it applies to all of the other tables as well. So we could execute the same select count star from perhaps mysql.user, the user table. This tells us that there are three users on the system, at least defined in the user table. And if we execute a select user host password, a common query that we've been running from mysql.user, you'll see there are actually three users, two root users and one Linux CBT at any host user. Count just makes it much quicker to get to that information. Now our current table contains, the people table that is, contains six rows. We can combine limit with select to return only a set number of rows. What if we're only interested in the top three records from six rows? So normally when we execute a select star from people it returns all six records. But what if we're interested in just the top three? Execute the same query, select star from people and just include a limit statement, limit to three. And without specifying any offset, any beginning and ending values, select will return only the first three results from the result set, which includes the first three names that you see here, one, two, and three. Let's try that out. Here are the three names returned because they are the first three records in the result set. Of course, if you include other modifiers such as order by, limit still works. So for example, what if we were to order by, so we limit three, and we order by first underscore name. The default is ascending, so we go descending. And let's just check our syntax here. So we'll select star from people, order by, descending, and then limit three and without a comma it returns just those three so first we have to order the results and then we can limit it to just three values now these, these are three values descending if we were to go with ascending which is alphabetically logical or we don't even need to specify ASC but if we do then it's alphabetize A to Z with A being at top and Z being at the bottom. And then we limit it to the first three results. We could limit to four, then we get the fourth record, five. But if we limit to six, that relates or that indicates all of the records that we have. So as a result, we have returned all records. So the limit really has no functionality or doesn't come into play because we only have six records. So we can use limit. Now what if we wanted to return specific rows? Currently we're ascending our order, or order by ascending, and we have six rows, A all the way through T. What if we wanted to limit the output, but only to return specific rows, such as rows two through four? Use limit and just simply specify two comma four. This will return rows two through four from the result set and there it is rows two through four so that's another thing you can do if you return rows one through three notice that and this should also highlight the fact that mysql indexes records at the value zero so the very first record is indexed at zero so if you say one through three like we did for example you're really getting the second record through the fourth record if you say 0 through 2, you get the first record through the third record. So keep that in mind. So again, just to recap, if we go with 0 through 2, you get records 1, or 0 through 2, that is, you get records 1 through 2. And if you go with 0 through 3, you get 1 through 3. So it's indexed at 0 instead. So we can use limit to limit the output. Another thing you can do with select is dump the output to a file. Similarly to using, or the reverse of using MySQL import to get data into MySQL, we can select records, but have the records sent to the file system to a default tab delimited file. 
Let's show you how that's done. Let's say we want to dump all of the records from our database, which contains six entries. So select star from people returns six entries. Let's say we want to place these values into a file, tab separated that is. We can simply run select star from people and then include into out file followed by the file name in between single quotes. The file name will be stored in a directory unless otherwise specified that's relative to the current database. So on the file system, as you know, databases are stored within var lib mysq or var lib and the name of the database. In this case, the database name is contact. So the file, when written, will be stored in the contact subdirectory. Let's give it a name, and we'll say into out file people.txt, and the results will be sent to that file. Let's return to the shell using, and we'll show you using the backslash, backslash exclamation escape sequence. If we backslash exclamation sequence ls ltr var lib mysql or in this case con mysql contact that is we'll see the newly created file and we don't have permissions to look at it because we're logged in to the shell as the user Linux CBT so what we'll need to do in a separate shell is sun specify roots password then navigate to var lib mysql contact where contact tables indexes and other related items are stored here's the file that we selected the output to go to and if we execute a file against people you'll see that it contains that it is a text file and if we cat it you'll see that it contains all of the entries tab separated. So this could be re-imported, modified by some other utility using grep for example, so we could cat people.txt and grep let's say any of the names from the list to return certain items. We could massage the data and then re-import it. Additionally you could use select into to only return to the file specific columns. So the select into that we just executed could be just specific columns. Let's select first underscore name comma email and have this go to people.txt. Now the file already exists so let's remove it from the file system and we'll get rid of it then rerun the query and then re-examine the file. So from the shell we'll cat people.txt you'll see that it contains only first name followed by email. So that's the power of having your data in a structured environment such as a DBMS. Select has many many features many many options the select into file name we just ran could also, if you'd like, terminate the output file using a different dem delimiter and using different line ending termination sequences instead of just this typical Unix line ending sequence of backslash n or new line character. We could have the output written so it's Windows friendly. We could also use again a different field separator such as comma. The default is tab which is read or understood or parsed by most tools including Microsoft Excel and the like. So select whatever columns you want from whatever table or tables we haven't gotten into multiple tables yet and joins into an out file will place the results into a tab separated out file that you can then use to process elsewhere in your system. So let's continue our introduction to the DML command select we've selected output to a tab separated file which is the default for MySQL's export function. How about if we wanted to change the delimiter, the field delimiter that is, to a comma instead of a tab? Well, simply rerun the same query, but instead we're going to add a field terminated by, and let's just copy this into our notes so that we have it stored. But We're going to tell it what fields or what to use to terminate the fields rather than relying upon MySQL to default to the tab separator. So let's go ahead and specify after we've specified the out file we want to go ahead and say that the fields are to be terminated by comma instead of the default tab. Let's go ahead. Now, if the file exists, as you know, you'll need to remove it. Otherwise, MySQL will be unable to overwrite the file. 
let's erase this particular clause. By the way, if you're stuck in a clause, you can simply backslash C to exit or to clear the command, for example. We'll control shift V and this will place the file into people.txt which already exists, so we'll go ahead and remove it. Let's remove RF since we're in directory people.txt. Be careful when you're in the database subdirectory because you could inadvertently move or remove tables. As you know, the table names are similar. So for example, people.form, myd, and myi are there, and you don't want to remove those files, certainly. Let's attempt to output the file again, and this time the file will be terminated, the fields that is within the file will be terminated using commas instead of the default tab. Let's cat people dot text and notice that the values that we elected to export are separated by commas. So any utility that you'd want to use that can parse using commas can do so. For example, awk. If we were to cat the contents of people dot text and pipe the output into awk and tell it that the field separator is a comma we could then extract the contents of the fields one by one. So we could print, for example, field number one. Once awk knows what the separator is, let's move the print over and terminate this particular line. We'll check the syntax, of course. And just want to be sure that it knows what the field separator is. Let's move this over and it prints out just the, the lone instance if you tell it that the separator is the comma instead. In fact, you can just run awk would help to see the field separator option and that's the dash f option. Let's try it again. So dash f comma should give us the value that we're interested in. There it is, first column. And if we want, we can print the second column uh, instead of the first because it's delimited by a comma. Utilities such as awk default to tab or white spaces in general, but comma is another common delimiter, so you can use it. You can use MySQL to output using that as well. We can print both columns. We can reverse the order. For example, print two first, then one, email address, then name, and so on. So great. We can output changing the delimiter quite easily. Now there's another thing we want to do. We, we showed you how to use limit, which limits the number of rows that are returned, similar to like exporting the top 100 within a SQL environment, or the top n number of records. But what if you wanted to know how many records would have been returned had we allowed MySQL to return all records by not specifying the limit option? To illustrate what we mean, let's make some space on the screen, and we're going to select star from people. Now we know that people contains six rows because the output tells us and we could literally count each row, but there are six rows. However, when we select any number of columns and use the limit statement, we can instruct MySQL to return n number of records, in this case just three. What if you wanted to know how many records would have been returned? Well, let's just alter our output here and we'll specify this as m select star from people and we will use limit to limit the output to three records however in order to alter this so that MySQL reports what would have been returned not necessarily the actual values but the number of records that would have been returned MySQL supports another option that option is called SQL calc and it's case insensitive found rows so it's in, it in instructs MySQL to calculate the number of rows that were found and at least return a value to us so if we include the SQL calc found rows key statement followed by a separate query after the first query run runs which is a select found rows we will know how many rows would have been returned had we not used the limit statement. Seems a bit complicated, but what really happens is SQL, or MySQL in this case, stores in memory how many rows it found, and then the select found rows simply outputs that value after the primary query has run. Let's copy this full statement and paste it into our terminal window. And notice three records are still returned but found rows returns six. So this is a great way of outputting how many rows were actually found. MySQL 
calculates the number of rows found but doesn't necessarily return it. Let's rerun it. This time we'll set the limit to two. Only two are returned, but found rows is still six. Let's set it to one. One is returned, the first, but as mentioned, found rows is six. So if you want to see how many rows would have been returned, just simply include SQL calc found rows and then follow up your primary query. Well, you include the SQL calc found rows in the primary query. Follow up your primary query with a secondary query which says select found rows. In other words, export the value of what was just found. That's a neat little feature provided by MySQL. Now what we want to talk about now is aliasing. So let's call this section column aliasing. It's very easy to understand and it's very useful. Sometimes you want to select columns but change the names of the column headers. Perhaps for output that is going to be imported by another program or for some other reason, perhaps just for aesthetics. So the way you go about changing the names of the columns that are returned is to use the as statement. Normally we select columns that we're interested in such as first name, last name, or first name email from a given column or from a given table which returns the columns that we've specified that is. So here's an example of selecting first name email. But we're going to change first name email to first name last underscore name. These are the first two columns defined in the people table first name, last name. But we don't want the column header to be returned as the name of the column in the table. So in this case we use as to specify the new name. Let's start slowly by doing just one column. So we'll select first name as and in between single quotes since we're going to change this new column header to a name which includes a space we'll call it literally capital first space capital name and then we'll include from people with a semicolon to terminate. Let's try running this query. So select the column as it really is represented in the people table but alias it as first space name. Let's try this out. We'll just cancel this command here that's about to run using a backslash C and paste our new command and notice that the new column header reflects first space name or the alias name and this output can be imported into any other program as the new column name. So this is a neat little feature that all SQL compliant DBMS's provide and that's the ability to change a column name. So let's go ahead and do it for multiple columns. So first name as first name comma last underscore name as last name or whatever you want to call it. This is just a logical way of doing things. Since we called first name, first space name, then might as well call last name, last space name. Now, first name is called first space name, last name is called, or last underscore name is called last space name. So we can change column headers using column aliasing. Very easy. For each column that you select that you intend to change the column header, simply use an as after you've selected the column. So select column as, and if it contains spaces, then just use single quotes. It never hurts to use single quotes or back ticks anyway, so that everything between the single quotes or back ticks are treated literally by MySQL. So that's a little bit about column aliasing. Here's another neat select feature. Sometimes we want to concatenate values. So let's select star from people to get a sense for what we mean. The people table contains these four columns or consists of these four columns. Sometimes you want to concatenate values that belong together such as first name and last name. Ideally because DBMS is represents structured data, you want to separate one's first name from their last name, from their business phone number, from their email, and any other relevant piece of information. But oftentimes in reporting you want this information to be together for the sake of reporting. So MySQL supports two varieties of the concatenation feature. Concatenation means to bring values together. Concatenation works in the shell. It allows us to cat many values or to bring values together. And it works similarly within the MySQL environment. So how do we go about concatenating values? Well, let's call this section concat values or concatenating values or catenating values. This will allow us to bring values together. Well, 
you run a select statement, of course, but the first flavor or variety of the concat statement resembles the following. We select concat, and in between the parentheses, we specify the columns that are to be concatenated. Let's go with the logical first name, last name again. We'll specify first name, comma, last name. But you'll notice a problem once we execute this query, and that is the values are juxtaposed with no spaces. And then we will concatenate them as a new column header. The concat function, and this is a function that we're referencing. It's a string function, by the way, and the MySQL reference documentation has an entire section on the different types of functions supported by the MySQL SQL interpreter. But when you select and you concatenate multiple columns, you can concatenate as many columns as you want, within reason of course, you need to specify a new column header because each of these columns in their own rights have their own column headers, first underscore name, last underscore name. So we'll need to use aliasing, which is why we showed you aliasing first, to specify or indicate the new column header. So we'll select concat first name, last name as and in between single quotes the new column header and a logical value here would simply be full name and then you proceed with the remainder of the query which includes from and the name of the table that you intend to interrogate and of course you could limit the values order by and perform all of the other functions that we've shown you thus far or modifiers that we've shown you thus far let's run this query and see where the flaws are and then attempt to correct them now notice the values have been concatenated and the new column header and by the way these column headers that are returned when using concatenation or al aliasing are simply for output nothing's being updated within the table structure so the table structure still reflects first underscore name and last underscore name but notice that these values are juxtaposed with no spacing so we'll need to alter the concat statement to include a dummy space in between the first selected column and the last selected column or in between each column because we could specify multiple columns so in between first name or first underscore name and last underscore name we'll simply specify an open single quote space and a closed single quote this is enough to offer spacing between the two values as long as we separate the values by commas and the dummy space that we'll insert this will provide the necessary spacing let's try this again but this time with the new syntax and notice that the values are now separated all under full name but there's a space in between them and we can increase the number of spaces by just simply stretching the spacing between the single quotes let's try that again and this will just open the spacing up a little bit but usually a single space is sufficient now there's a shortcut to the to what we've just performed here and that's called concat underscore ws which is a word separator so we'll simply take what we have here and write it as concat underscore ws but this time the very first argument accepted by the concat underscore ws function is the actual word separator so here we specify the same word separator that was specified in the first statement followed by a comma and then the names of the fields that are to be selected from the people table so it's, it's altered just a little bit a single space is the word separator and then we we are free to specify as many columns as we want so the folks who created the mysql folks who created the concat function saw the need to con to create a concat word separator function because commonly folks concatenate columns and need to just tell the function one delimiter and select as many columns as you want in other words concat underscore ws is less cumbersome than simply concat followed by actually specifying the delimiter between every single column so it's just less cumbersome let's try concat underscore ws and see how this works out and notice it performs the same function but it allows us to specify the field delimiter or the field spacing once or the word separator we should say once we're treating it as a field separator because if you were to output this into a file this is how it would appear in the file that will would then be imported by some other utility so we specify the word separator once followed by any number of columns so now let's go ahead and include email as another column and you'll see how easily this becomes less cumbersome than the first example 
there it is. So we have a space between the first name, last name, as well as the email address. Whereas in the first model, we would have had to have specified this actual space between each of the values. So if we were to simply go comma email in the first example and then paste it, you'll see that the spacing between the last name and the email address is non-existent. We would really have to copy what you see here and put it between each of the fields, which again becomes a bit messy. So use concat underscore ws as a neat string function for providing spacing and concatenating these types of values that should be related. Now there are all sorts of functions. There are mathematical functions, string functions, comparison functions, you name it. Just check the MySQL reference documentation. We just want to give you a taste for, for what's actually possible. There's a lot that you can do with select, a lot we haven't shown you including subqueries and the like which we'll be looking at as we delve into altering the structure of our database.